for loans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the, I just wanted to raise this evening uh, the issue of the Pacific Oyster Mortality Syndrome, or more commonly known as POMS, outbreak that has occurred in Tasmania uh, in recent weeks. Uh, this is a, an absolute disaster uh, for a very important industry uh, in my state and in my electorate, particularly. Uh, there are, I think, potentially 400 jobs at risk as a result of this uh, devastating outbreak at the moment, which is uh, con contained largely in, in south-east Tasmania, but uh, ongoing testing will, be, will, will continue to be done in areas a little bit further north, obviously in the, in the Swan River and George's Bay and up, up of course, on the northwest coast. But, uh, uh, look, I just, it, is a, it is a tragedy. And, uh, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, whilst none of the hatcheries uh, in, in, the, in, in Tasmania have tested po positive to uh, POMS, uh, obviously there are restrictions that are being put on uh, where that spat. But Tasmania supplies somewhere between 80 and 90 per cent of all the, uh, the spat that goes to other parts of the country for Pacific oysters, so South Australia and New South Wales and, and Victoria and other places. So, uh, it, it's, it's, a huge, it's a huge concern. Um, uh, the, 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 the disease or the outbreak, the virus, was discovered uh, in early uh, February uh, of this year um, and really has brought the, the whole industry to a, a standstill and obviously the impact that that's having on uh, what are really family businesses uh, is, is quite, uh, quite phenomenal. Um, it's, uh, it's been detected uh, in areas uh, in the south and, and as far north as uh, Little Swanport on the east coast uh, and also in a wild population in the Derwent estuary. Uh, and it's, it's deemed by those people that know, and I had a re real long conversation earlier this week with Patrick Hone from FRDC, and uh, I thank him for, for being very open about, about this and uh, helping to improve uh, my knowledge of, of what is a very complicated situation because uh, you know the difficulty there for the hatcheries, of course, is that uh, none of them are going to bring in uh, those those oysters that have shown some resistance to the disease uh, that are in populations that have survived. They're unlikely to bring them back into to hatcheries there that are that are deemed to be clean at the moment. So, so that I think the challenge for the industry, and this is the feedback I'm getting. I had one of my staff attend uh, uh, two meetings in the last two weeks. Uh, one at, one at uh, Dunalley. Uh, last week and won this week in Sorrell, and I thank Lorraine Anderson from my office at Brighton for 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 the uh, for, for doing that um, because uh, this this is going to have a huge impact and uh, it, it is of great great concern and uh, as I say it, it will be a long road indeed to recovery. Uh, the Commonwealth, though, indeed, the Speaker stands ready stands ready to assist and of course biosecurity is a, a fundamental. Uh, responsibility uh, of, of, of us in an island, in, in an island nation. Um, that initial emergency response, and I acknowledge the work done by Minister Rockcliffe, uh, the Tasmanian government immediately uh, allowed um, the exemption of nearly $775,000 worth of fees uh, to those businesses. Uh, but the Commonwealth is standing, standing ready to, uh, to uh, support the state government. Uh, to deliver uh, what positive outcomes they can. Um, there is there's a stronger biosecurity and quarantine initiative, uh, it's SBQI, uh, sometimes known as the, the flying squad. I know they've had success in, in Queensland uh, with the Panama disease and bananas and other places. And of course, in the agricultural white paper, there was the, there's the immediate assistance fund. So uh, it's a matter of, I guess, the, the industry, uh, the department in Tasmania uh, working uh, collaboratively to come up with a plan uh, that can be submitted to the Commonwealth and we stand ready uh, to support those businesses and uh, I think particularly and uh, uh, my thoughts are indeed with of course Neil Stump from the Tasmanian Seafood Industry Council, Neil, Ray and Sue Schwanke, Blue Lagoon Oysters, uh, Tom Gray from Bangor Wine and, and Oyster Shed, uh, Yvonne Young and Steve Leslie from Angazi Oysters, and, and fortuitously the Angazi species is not impacted by this. Ben Cameron uh, operates a hatchery at Dunalley and, and all of the staff that he employs. Tim Pawley from Southern Cross Marine Culture, uh, Todd England, uh, Jeff and Sheila Peddle, Max Cunningham. Uh, all, of, all of these businesses are impacted and uh, 
Uh, I think the, the, the issue is going to be ongoing for, for a long time, but uh, as I say, we stand ready to help. Thank you.